Chapter One. Waiter, wine, please. The Northern Liang Palace lay nested in Qingliang Mountain, surrounded by lush vegetation and presiding over thousands of households. As the Lord of Northern Liang, Xu Xiao ruled over the three northwestern provinces, and was the sole monarch in the kingdom who came from a different lineage. Both within the royal court and the realm of fighters, he invoked condemnation and acclaim in equal parts. In the royal court, opinions were split between those who dubbed him Lord Xu the Barbarian and those who saw him as the Second King. Today, the palace was a buzz with the coming of a maester from Mount Longhu. To take Lord Xu's second son, Xu Longxiang, as a disciple, fulfilling a promise made twelve years ago. Notwithstanding the maester's otherworldly presence and venerable standing, proceeding with the discipleship initiation had all been but smooth. Xu Longxiang, born with the naturally indestructible constitution of an Achilles, was throwing one of his pig-headed tantrums. He had been squatting beneath a pear tree, engrossed in observing a colony of ants. His father's pleas falling on deaf ears, whereas his word held absolute authority across twelve counties, the Grand Consul had felt his throat parched and his tongue weary, and still all he got was a resounding fart from Xu Longxiang. Just when he thought he was at his wit's end. An idea struck the Lord. He chuckled. <laughs> Longxiang, isn't it about time your brother's back from his travels? Aren't you heading outside to see if he's entered the city? Xu Longxiang's deadpan eyes sparked with a rare light. Pulling his father by the arm, he dashed outward. It took them half an hour amidst the corridors of Northern Liang Palace before they managed to get out of the palace. Upon seeing the deserted nearby roads, Xu Longxiang shot a furious glance at his sheepish father before abruptly turning on his heel. The maester from Mount Longhu intercepted Xu Longxiang by laying two fingers on the latter's arm and said, "Xu Longxiang, you were born with a gift rarely seen in centuries. Don't waste it, and come with me to Mount Longhu." In no more than ten years, you'd be able to leave the mountain fully equipped for great endeavors. The youth snorted disdainfully and took a further step, but found himself unable to land his foot on the ground. Stunned, Xu Longxiang huffed and forced his way forward, dragging the wizened sage by a few steps. Seemingly unfazed, the maester exerted a little more force and stopped the teen in his tracks. Xu Longxiang flew into a rage and clutched the old Taoist's arm with both hands, flinging him away. The old Taoist landed gracefully on a stone lion by the palace gate, looking every inch an ethereal sage. Should he have seen this move by the maester, Lord Xu's eldest son Xu Fengyan would no doubt have exclaimed, "That calls for a reward!" Known for his extravagant gestures, the spectacle-loving prince once gave away a hundred grand of silver coins to a wanderer who fought a local swordsman. Lord Xu had two daughters and two sons, each one more eccentric than the next. The eldest daughter, Lady Xu Zhihu, left three dead husbands in her wake. She was notorious in the five counties of the Jiangnan Circuit as a femme fatale, especially for her brazen antics. Lady Xu Weixiong, his second daughter, was unglamorous, but adorned herself with vast knowledge and a plethora of talent. Proficient in astronomy and geography, she studied under the Shangying Academy's Han Guozi. Encountered imperial luminaries such as military strategist Xu Huang, as well 
as sorcerer extraordinaire Sima Tan as her seniors. Being the youngest, Xu Longxiang had yet to make his name. In contrast, the eldest son was a household name, even in the royal capital. When Lord Xu's name comes up, and inadvertently his heir Xu Fengyan's name would come into the picture, prompting praises of the eminent father having an illustrious son. While Lord Xu was known as a hero on the battlefield, his son made his mark in the baser arena of pleasure-seeking. Three years ago, Xu Fengyan was rumored to be ousted from the palace to embark on an experience-building journey customarily taken by young scions of prominent families before they take over the reins. Back in the northern Liang Palace, Xu Longxiang charged at the lion statue, attempting to hurl out the old Taoist prick along with the lion, all ten tons of it. He barely began shaking the lion before the old Taoist floated down, taking the teenager by the hand. With a mountain mover technique, he effortlessly lifted the half-kneeling teenager to his feet while he spoke with a gentle laugh. Come away with me, my disciple. With one hand gripping a corner of the lion pedestal, the teen howled. I'm waiting for my brother's return. Lord Shu sighed by the side. Fine, let's wait some more. The Taoist loosened his hold on Xu Longxiang's arm. As dusk approached, an old man and a young man walking along a main road cast elongated shadows, stretched by the lingering radiance of the setting sun. Hang in there, old Wang. The words trailed out feebly from the young man, whose real age it was hard to pinpoint. The old man with him likely a servant, chuckled, revealing a row of yellow teeth with two missing front teeth. Dash it, man. I'm out of tears just waiting for you. The young man rolled his eyes as he spoke. The exhaustion from the 600-mile homeward journey was going to be the death of him. All he had were raggy clothes and tattered sandals, plus one wretched horse. Outside the city walls, there was a tavern with the sun advertising apricot wine. He looked for an empty stool to sit on and shouted, Waiter, wine please. The nearby customers shot disgusted looks at the two impoverished bums and took pains to keep their distance. Once the waiter laid eyes on the young man and his servant, he gave them a mirthless smile and reminded them, our signature apricot wine costs 20 coins per jug. Having gone through a baptism of fire on the world's harsh realities these three years, the prince's once haughty demeanor and temper had mellowed significantly. He said gaspingly, No worries. Put it on my tab. You're sure to be well rewarded. Reward? The waiter cackled, disdain, written across his face. Forcing a bitter smile, the young man placed his thumb in forefinger against his lips, letting out a soft whistle before slumping over and dozing off. A horde of iron-clad riders burst out of the city gates, and they turned out to be the famed heavy cavalry of northern Lian, each one capable of fighting a hundred foes. The flag-bearing general had in his hand a blood-red banner with a coat of arms representing none other than Lord Xu, Lord of Northern Lian. Pray, who in the world could rival the Northern Liang Iron Cavalry, who had galloped and rallied winds across the kingdom's 13 provinces back to back. Now, 200 elite cavalrymen surged forward, their numbers spreading out and displaying their powerful presence in full splendor. The general 
bearing the rank of fourth rank military officer, dismounted and spotted the aged groom holding the reins of his horse. At once, he sprinted toward the tavern, knelt down, and declared with reverence, Your Highness, Chi Donggo, at your service. And the young man, still half dozing, merely mumbled, Waiter, wine please. Chapter 2 Wide Fox Face Xu Longxiang jerked his horse to a sudden stop, shouting his brother's name several times. Seeing no reaction from the latter, he thought his brother had died and broke into loud sobs. It was only after old Huang hobbled over and whispered a few words that Xu Longxiang started to laugh while sucking in his snot, giving the old servant a pat on the shoulder that landed as a slap so hard the old man fell squarely on his butt. Xu Longxiang then carried his sleeping elder brother on his back and walked slowly towards the city gate. Once word got out that Xu Fengyuan was back, chaos ensued within Ling province. A lone slender figure trailed behind the iron cavalry into the city. Clad all in white, with picturesque dark eyebrows and porcelain-like skin, her countenance exuded an air of snobbish nobility, with the blades adorning her waist, offering an added swagger. She singled out a fortune teller and inquired, Sir, which noble family does that person being escorted by the Northern Liang Cavalry belong to? The old man replied, Miss, uh, that's the eldest son of the Lord of Northern Liang. The girl's eyebrows furrowed slightly at being addressed as Miss, but she made no retort. Squinting towards the Iron Cavalry squad ahead, her eyes carried a hint of murderous intent as she spoke. Beggar Xu, is this your so-called one truth for every nine lies makes for a convincing scam? I cannot believe Lord Xu, the manslayer, has such a wimp of a son. Meanwhile, at the fragrantly opulent grand courtyard of the Prince of Northern Liang, Xu Fengyan lay in deep slumber upon a massive bed, his face worn and fatigued. Seated at the edge of the bed were Lord Xu and Xu Longxiang, while Maester Zhao stood nearby. Old Huang sat by the doorway. Mister, is my son all right? asked Lord Xu. He's fine. Just half a day's rest and he'll recover. The old Taoist proclaimed with confidence. Xu Fengyan slept for two days and two nights in a row. Xu Longxiang watched over him and had thus gone without food nor water for two days and two nights in a row. Lord Xu rushed over upon hearing the news. He came to see his son immediately, snatching up a censer by the bedside and flinging it towards him. Xu Fengyan erupted into a torrent of insults. Lord Xu, damn you! Three years since you kicked me out of the castle. No wonder you keep saying I'm not your flesh and blood. With a tilt of his head, Lord Xu avoided the censor and put on an apologetic expression. Finally, when Xu Fengyan had finished smashing everything there was to be smashed and laid motionless from exhaustion, Lord Xu piped up sheepishly. Feel better now? If so, have a meal. You can vent properly when your energy is restored. Gasping like a bull, Xu Fengyan pointed at Lord Xu. Damn, mule. I'll spare you today, but you better watch your back. Lord Xu replied cheerfully. Sure, sure, I'm on it. Xu Fengyan then caught sight of his brother's foolish grin and his gaze softened. He muttered gently, Silly Xu Longxiang, 
Come here, stand up and let me see if you've grown taller and bigger. The teenager stood up in earnest. Xu Fengyan gestured to assess his brother's height, which came to just under his head. With a hint of disappointment, he chuckled. Neither tall nor big. The youth scooped up his brother in his arms, prompting Xu Fengyan to laugh heartily. Your strength did grow by a lot, though. After recuperating for three days, Xu Fengyan went to the Tingchao Pavilion to take Xu Longxiang fishing. The Tingchao Pavilion housed within its walls thousands of scrolls and innumerable rare, one-of-a-kind books. There was no lack of secret tomes containing long-lost martial arts knowledge. Fifteen years ago, Lord Xu once led the Iron Cavalry in person, brandishing an imperial edict and the sword of state in crushing several dozen martial strongholds all over the kingdom. The proud and mighty Forbidden Mountain Villa was even vanquished in a whirlwind of ashes and smoke. Forbidden Mountain Villa was once a mecca of martial training twenty years ago, with the exception of several volume sets handed over to the royal palace. All the martial tomes archived in the villa were confiscated and kept on the sixth floor of the Tingchao Pavilion. On his wooden couch, Xu Fengyan recalled the white fox face he had tricked into entering Liang territory. Tousling his brother's hair, he said with a smile, I told you I was going to trick a beauty into becoming your wife, didn't I? Guess what? I really got one. Someone with a face resembling a white fox cubs, carrying a pair of blades. One's called Nivisword, and the other's called Tonitrasword, both being one-of-a-kind, world-famous blades. Too bad it's a dude. Chapter 3 Two Dimples By all accounts, Xu Fengyan was quite a handsome and striking Casanova. Several popular courtesans in Ling province had been fighting tooth and nail over him in jealous fits. If anyone in the castle dared to shoot daggers at Xu Fengyan and displayed their hatred of him unreservedly, that would be the maid who at this moment was distancing herself from several servant girls who were smiling coyly. Jiang Ni was her name. In Western Shu, Jiang was the national surname. She was the princess of Western Shu, and her real name was Jiang Si. Twelve years ago, Western Shu was destroyed by Lord Xu. That was when Jiang Ni entered the Northern Liang Palace. Xu Fengyan waved away the others and cheekily said, So, is her royal flatness disappointed that I didn't die in foreign lands? How could I bear to die before I help you through the passage of womanhood? Your chest is swelling up nicely. Seems like her royal fullness is a better fit for you now. Unperturbed, Jiang Ni maintained her poker face. Hidden beneath her sleeve, was the dagger oracle, worth twelve cities, she would instantly slice off Xu Fengyan's head given the chance. But when she saw that other man, she had to suppress the impulse to gamble with her life. The man in question was the big bear among Lord Xu's foster sons, Yuan Zhuozong. His abilities were almost on par with the Ten Masters. Before his journey, Xu Fengyan once told her, I'm only giving you one chance to kill me. Fail to kill me the second time, and I'll kill you. Alas, as she blossomed into adulthood that year, despite managing to lure Xu Fengyan onto her bed, she missed out on the opportunity. Your Highness, I finally see you! 
I hadn't been able to eat well these three years. A dandy fat man rushed over as he spoke in tears. Like the big bear, he was also Lord Shu's foster son. His name was Chu Lushan, the lackey dog of the three canines. It was this fat man who gave Xu Fengyan his snow white Jia falcon. All in all, a smooth talking backstabber with incorrigible lust. The fatty sniggered. Your Highness, I took in a new babe, all smooth skin and tender flesh, and I have reserved her especially for you. Xu Feng Yan nodded his head. Fill me in. As the two were talking, Lord Xu sauntered in with a slight limp. His left leg was struck by an arrow during his Western Chu war campaign. On seeing Lord Xu's coming, the portly Chu knelt down on the ground, while Yuan Zuozong merely bowed. Lord Xu motioned to Alastor for him to sit down. He was about to take a seat at the settle himself when Xu Feng Yan promptly kicked him in the butt, forcing him to settle for the wooden stool. Xu Feng Yan said sulkily, Lord Xu, let me ask you, as a father, what do you do when someone bullies your son? Lord Xu humored him. Why, I'd obliterate the whole clan, of course. If that's not enough, you may work their wives and concubines like cattle, and plunder their property just to spend it all one go. Xu Feng Yan took out a piece of paper writ full of his enemies' names. Gritting his teeth, he said, So, Dad, these fellas are all my enemies. Hurry and finish them off. Lord Xu took out the paper, finished reading it, and said with a slight apprehension, Son, that's quite a lot of enemies you've got, and it's a long stretch to call many of them enemies. Xu Feng Yan lamented amid sighs. My dad doesn't dote on me, and my mum's not here to love me. There's no point in living such a wretched life. Lord Xu was quick to chirp in. I'll do it, I'll do it. No questions asked. Having made the promise, Lord Xu turned his head and said in a solemn tone, Yuan, prepare two storming cavalry companies and stand by for orders. Chu, kill those traitorous bastards on the list if you must, but make it a bit more palatable. I'll give you a year and a half to plan it out. Yuan Zuozong bowed and said, Yes, my lord. The portly Chu also stood up and bent down. I am on it, my lord. But just then, Xu Feng Yan retrieved another name list, this time with only a tenth of the number of people on the previous one. He chuckled. <sighs> Old pop. You can't think I'd really make you the mutual enemy of a dozen noble families and half of the world's fighters, can you? Here, look at this one. It's too bad for these unlucky devils, but leave the rest. Lord Xu heaved a sigh of relief. In all seriousness, he took the second piece of paper and nodded. Since you say so, then we won't raise too much fuss. Settle it within a year. Lord Xu threw a sharp glance towards his foster son Chu, and the latter took up the paper before immediately retreating. Seeing the rosy color slowly returning to his son's face, Lord Xu was brimming with contentment. He pleaded gently, Long Xiang's not willing to go to Mount Longhu, so how about you coax him into it? He listens to you. Xu Feng Yan nodded. Yeah, I know. Go do your stuff. Don't bother me while I'm fishing. Every time Jiang Ni came face to face with Xu Xiao, a chill ran through her body, nipping every rash thought in the bud. It was as if he was the world's most fearsome man. Yet, 
Even so, Jiang Ni was determined to slug it out and find a chance to kill Xu Feng Yan as part of a grand vengeance. Xu Feng Yan reclined sideways on the set and muttered softly, Jiang Ni, you should head out when you have the chance. Jiang Ni sneered. Your Highness goes on a trip and a bunch of people suffer an unjust disaster. What a grand gesture befitting the heir of the Grand Consul. Xu Feng Yan laughed. How else will I help you pop the cherry? The corners of Jiang Ni's mouth twitched, her lips pressed in resentment. Xu Feng Yan smiled lightly. When you get angry, and when you're happy, there are those two dimples, bless. Love them. So don't kill me off just yet. Let me catch a few more glimpses. An expressionless Jiang Ni replied, Just you wait. The next time I'm killing you, I'll laugh most happily. Xu Feng Yan straightened himself and with his back towards Jiang Ni, exclaimed rather poetically, That would undoubtedly be the most captivating scenery in the world. Chapter 4 Go Pick Hawthorns on That Mountain Xu Feng Yan left the Qingchao Pavilion and came to the stable, where there was a lone, russet-colored horse with a lame leg. Old Huang was grumbling at the horse when he spotted Prince Xu. He grinned from ear to ear, his two missing front teeth in full view, painting an altogether goofy scene. Xu Feng Yan spoke. Old Huang, what happened to the case you always carry on your back? When travelling outside, Old Huang carried among his luggage a rectangular red sandalwood casket, and there was a curious story around it. Xu Feng Yan's numerous requests to look at it had all been rejected. Back at Qinghe County, Xu Feng Yan had sneaked off to check it out when old Huang was taking a dump, but the casket was bone-chillingly cold and he caught wind chill afterwards. That was the last time he entertained the idea of tampering with it. To this day, Xu Feng Yan still vividly recalled how, after they escaped the pursuit of murderous bandits, he had asked the groom, Old Huang, are you a skilled fighter? Old Huang had nodded somewhat sheepishly then. Xu Feng Yan had pressed on. You the highly skilled kind. Old Huang seemed even more embarrassed and had nodded again. Thinking of the heroic spectacle earlier, when they were chased by a gang carrying spears and blades, he asked again. How high exactly? Old Huang blinked for a moment before raising his hand to a point not very high, apparently. Xu Feng Yan's resentment towards the Grand Consul stemmed not only from the latter forgetting to dispatch a skilled escort, but also due to his failure to impact the simple wisdom of caution when venturing out in the wild. On the contrary, he smothered Xu Feng Yan with money and treasures, making him a helpless juicy lamb for anyone to exploit. Everyone saw him as a ravishing target to pounce upon. It was a godsend that they met White Foxface later on, who agreed to accept the second half of the Scriptures of Sacrifice in exchange for escorting him back to Ling Province. Xu Feng Yan walked into the stable with his sigh and lamented, Oh, red hair, if my sister ever saw this once noble steed, now reduced to a sorry state through mistreatment. I can't guarantee she won't give me a hard time. These three years, one Jeer falcon, one horse, plus an old servant whose eyesight had thankfully not faded, comprised his entire world. Reminded that White Foxface was still in the city, he planned to go out of the place with old Huang to have some fun. He just got out of the stable when he saw Maester Jia from Mount Longhu. Xu Feng Yan pulled in the old Taoist by the shoulder and whispered cunningly, Hey, 
Old guy, it's a good thing that my brother's going to Mount Longhu, but you gotta show me some courtesy, huh? Exasperation on his face, the old Taoist took out an ancient book and said wistfully, This art of Gladius. Never did he expect Xu Fengyan to instantly lose his humor, as Prince Xu pointed toward the Qingchao Pavilion and chided. You disappoint me. If I wanted some secret tome, need I go anywhere else? It was only then that the old Taoist recalled the existence of a martial literature archive within the palace called Qingchao Pavilion. At a loss, he said, Then what shall I do? Xu Feng Yan lowered his voice. Any comely young female disciples at Mount Longhu? The old Taoist whispered back with much distress. Since your highness is interested in exploring the way of Taoism, I am willing to point you to one or two female disciples. Xu Feng Yan gave him the thumbs up. Way to go. Immediately, the old Taoist, one of Mount Longhu's three celestial masters, added anxiously, One must pick an auspicious time to initiate the discipleship. If we still don't head to Mount Longhu by today, we'll miss the timing, and it won't all go well for Longshang. Xu Feng Yan knitted his eyebrows. It's got to be right now? Maester Zhao nodded in assent. Right now. On the way to find Xu Longxiang, the Taoist inadvertently turned his head and glanced at the old groom smiling innocently by the stable. The weightiness of his steps finally lightened somewhat. Xu Feng Yan came to his brother's yard and found the kid squatting while observing ants. He walked over and patted his brother's head, speaking straight to the point. Stop looking. The ants at Mount Longhu are bigger. Go over there and look at them. Chop chop, learn some skills so you can leave the mountain earlier. And bring me a satchel of wild hawthorns, you hear? Xu Longxiang rose to his feet and gave a reluctant nod. Xu Feng Yan cackled. Longxiang, my silly brother. See him? He's your master from now on. Once you reach Mount Longu, you can hit anyone, just not him. If anyone dares to call you fool, just beat them senseless. Or write home, and I'll take our northern young cavalry to rampage Mount Longu. Remember, don't let them bully you. In this world, only we brothers and our two sisters get to be bullies. Xu Longxiang nodded, somewhat bewildered. Their separation was imminent. Prince Xu Feng Yan stood facing his brother, muttering softly. Silly brother. I won't be able to help wipe off your drool anymore. But I promise you, I'll continue to help you find the most beautiful girl in the world to be your wife. If she's unwilling, we'll drag her to the newlywed room if we have to. With reddened eyes, Xu Feng Yan turned to the old Taoist and said, Old guy, like I said, don't let anyone bully Longchang. Zhu Feng Yan may be a ne'er-do-well Casanova with no strength in his arms, but you should know the consequences. The old Taoist gave a wry smile and nodded. The escorting entourage, led by Qi Dang Guo, gradually departed. Neither Xu Feng Yan nor Xu Xiao accompanied them out of the city. Xu Feng Yan joined old Huang and managed a quiet laugh. No mood to drink booze today. How about later? The old servant laughed in agreement. Chapter 5 The Most Beautiful Girl in the World News of a beauty with peerless elegance coming to Dragon Inn had been the hot topic of the capital city of Ling province for the past two days, second only to Prince Xu's return in terms of buzz. Rumor had it 
that this lady was even more alluring than the top courtesan of Ling province. Yo Wei. The beauty had regard for no one and carried with her two blades differ in length, scaring off many a lusty chap. Perhaps only the prince of northern Liang could hope to rub shoulders with such a fine creature. Three days later, amid everyone's expectations, Xu Fengyan finally did come. The inn emptied out all of a sudden. The innkeeper wore a fawning smile as he served up a treasured jar of the finest aged liquor, claiming it was to welcome the Prince of Northern Liang and refresh him after his travels. Xu Fengyan sat facing White Foxface, personally opening the jar of liquor and unleashing a sweet scent into the air. He served a cup over, which was ignored. Xu Fengyan put down the cup, unable to stifle a laugh. Relax. I'm not interested in fellow guys. Or are you worried I'll snatch your blades? My, what do you take me for? White Foxface smiled and took a gentle sip, then said, Indeed. Someone who is able to casually give away the hollowed, heretic tome scripture of gold doesn't seem like one who would drool over Niversword and Tony Trustword. Xu Fengyan raised his cup and spoke. I toast to you. White Foxface cocked her head slightly in a questioning look. You've convinced me that indeed there's a skilled warrior capable of tearing through a hundred fierce bandits all on his own. Thanks for broadening my horizons. White Foxface still looked concerned, so Xu Fengyan elaborated. There are more than a few skilled fighters of your level in the castle, but I've never seen them in action, so I'd always held doubts on how powerful skilled combatants really are. White Foxface lowered her head and took one gulp of liquor. Xu Fengyan smiled. So, you're waiting for me. What's up? White Foxface broke into a smile and cut to the chase. I want to enter the Ting Chao Pavilion and finish reading all the secret martial literature. Xu Fengyan spoke with knitted brows. Just so you can become the world's top master? Foxy shook her head ever so slightly, and there was deliberation when she opened her mouth. There are four men I'd like to kill. Xu Fengyan was stunned. What, it's too hard for you? Who the hell are they? The Ten Masters? Foxy replied. Two of them are not inferior to the Ten Masters. The other two are even more formidable. Out of the four, two do not belong to the Liang Kingdom. Xu Fengyan slapped his thigh and exclaimed, You go, champ. I like brave guys like you, but the Ting Chao Pavilion isn't a place you can enter at will. White Foxface said, Beggar Xu, name your terms. Xu Fengyan said, Just one. Tell me your name. Nangong Puya. Came the reply from the white fox face. 